Good day, everyone. So, welcome again to our subject, the uh, Foundations of a Special and Inclusive Education. So, we end, so, in our part one of our lesson for discussion, we end up discussing about the educational placement and options. So, uh, we will now proceed to the accommodations and curricular modifications. So, students with disabilities and additional needs who are studying in an inclusive general education classroom may need accommodations in the form of instructional support and other supplementary services. So, others who need more intensive support are provided with curricular modifications. So, number one is what we call the accommodations. So, in accommodations, so based on the definition, these are the supports provided to students to help gain full access to class content and instruction without altering the curriculum standards and competencies expected and to demonstrate accurately what they know. So, when accommodations are provided in a general education classroom for children with disabilities, barriers are removed from assessing education so as a result children can work around the effect of their disabilities so for example um the altering instruments the toys or materials changing the room during specific activities providing time extensions or allowances for tests and tasks and changing response formats in worksheets so accommodations may be provided both during assessment and instruction depending on the learning profile and needs of a child and may vary in terms of presentations and response uh, settings and scheduling. So, in presentation accommodations, children with disabilities may need specialized presentation formats, especially those with sensory impairments, so they can learn the same content alongside typically developing peers. So, we have here the example or the table that presents the examples of accommodations in presentations. So, so, for example, in learning needs, so we have the visual support. So, the example of accommodations is minimize visual destruction, visual cues, so for example, the, uh, the use of color-coded or the highlighting. Use of larger print materials, um, you, may, you may consider the font size or the illustrations, and the use of sign language and videos with closed captioning. Next is the auditory and comprehension support. So you must read aloud by a peer. So audio books is also the effective way. Uh, digital text that reads aloud or give definition of words. Text-to-speech software advanced organizer or story guide, and highlighting or color coding. Next is listening and focusing. So uh, the example is the advanced organizer, the explicit verbal or visual cues, the physical prompts, repeat, clarify directions, and important information. So note-taking, support, and copy of directions. Um, next is, um, aside from presentation accommodations, we have also what we call the response accommodations. So, in response accommodation, it allows students with disabilities and additional needs a variety of ways to complete assignments, the written test, the performance tasks, and other activities. So, providing such instructional and assessment supports allows them to um, access the same learning experience as other students in general education classroom. So, for example, here in our table, we have the learning needs. In writing difficulty, for example, is error in spacing, the visual perceptual or spatial orientation, and eligible handwriting. So the examples of accommodations that we might use is different size or diameter of pencil, marker, or crayon. Um, pencil or pen grip, the triangular or pear shape. Scribe to record dictated responses, the finger spacer, Handwriting template, guide on the student's desk, or visual cues on paper, and different types and sizes of paper. Next is written expression difficulty. So you might use the electronic dictionary with spell check, online dictionary, the word processor with spelling and grammar check, writing cue cards, list of sight words, the writing templated outlines and graphic organizers.
Next is in my math difficulty. So you might use the calculator, the concrete models, and manipulatives, the visual representation, the problem solving guides, and the graphic organizers, and special paper graphing paper for computation. So next is aside from response accommodation, so we have the setting accommodations. So changes in the location or conditions of the educational setting or environment may be necessary for students who need support in terms of behavior, attention, and organization of space and materials. So accommodation in a settings may allow a child who gets easily distracted to work in quiet corner of the classroom in, him, in his own study carol so that he will not be sidetracked by environmental um, stimuli. So, on a child who is still unable to read fluently may be allowed to take a silent reading comprehension test in another room with a supervising adult just so she could hear herself read aloud which helps her better understand the story. So aside from that is we have the scheduling accommodations. So changing time allotments, schedule of tasks and assessments, and management of time are some types of scheduling accommodations. And um, students with low a slower ability in processing information and directions well as with focusing issues may need this type of accommodation. So some examples of accommodation that can modify scheduling are, for example, is extending time for assignments and assessments, um, providing uh, breaks in between tasks and providing a visual schedule or a checklist of individual responsibilities. Um, aside from that, as we have providing predictable routines and procedures, and providing an electronic device with alarms and cues. So we have also what we call the modifications. So in modification, um, we have the curriculum modifications. So these are provided for students with significant or severe disabilities where content expectations are altered and the performance outcomes are changed in relation to what are expected of typically developing students of the same Age. So, when instruction and assessment are modified, a student with disability is still given the right to access the same learning opportunities as other students in the general education class. But the tasks are more respectful and appropriate to the student's abilities and needs. So, the curricular modification includes changes in instructional level, content and performance criteria, as well as the breadth and depth of content learning learned by students. So students with disabilities or additional needs may be given more, less, or different content and resources materials altogether. So they may also be um, assessed using different standards that are more appropriate to the student's needs and abilities, so such as being provided with fewer objectives, shorter lessons, or a smaller number of vocabulary words to learn. So we have also, under the modification, we have the educational team. So they are responsible for instructional planning, may indicate curricular modifications in the student's individual education plan or the IEP. So such modifications are needed so that the students also have access to the general education curriculum. So let us have um, a look at Carl's learning profile. So does he need accommodations or curricular modifications? So um, these are the texts that presents the learning supports that Carl receives in the context of his reading and spelling difficulties. So, centered given the significant delays in Carl's reading and spelling performance, the team decided to provide him with different types of accommodation that adjusted the presentation of what is learned, how he responds, as well as the timing when tests are given. Uh, Miss Santos prepared his reading materials and worksheets using a bigger font size and more space in between lines to allow him to point to Two words as he reads and to use a ruler so he would not lose his place while reading. 
In tests that require extensive writing, he is still made to write as much as he could and after which he is asked to either give a verbal explanation to support what he has written or he dictates his oral responses to scribe. So the teacher now considers the oral exam as a respectful accommodation as Carl is still be able to access the same learning standards and opportunities despite his difficulties. So number five is we have the parent involvement. So another, this is the uh, other component of an inclusive and special education. So it has long been established that parent involvement in education, planning, and management of children with disabilities and additional needs is essential as they are the primary caregivers and have direct influence on their children. So the parent involvement is anchored on the Prof. Brenner's human ecological um, theory. So this states that there are five environmental systems that comprise a child's social context. So for the purposes of this, um, this guy, the microsystem. So in microsystem, as you can see here, this is where the child and his her and his or her family belong, along with peers, schools, and the immediate community, just like the neighborhood. So within this uh, microsystems, the child has direct interactions with the parents, uh, with the teachers, with the peers or um, with the others. While in the mesosystem, um, this refers to the linkages or the relationship between the um, microsystem, so as uh, between the microsystems, such as the connections between the family experiences and school experiences and between family and peers. So the division the of Early Childhood of the Council Exceptional Children, or the DEC, espoused the use of family-centered practices in the assessment and instruction of young children. So, um, we have here the principles of family-centered models. So, number one is, honors the family choice by changing the power relationship between the professional and families. Abandons a pathology orientation and adapts a strengths orientation and where the entire family becomes the unit of support and not just the child with a disability and the child's mother. So in this way, the whole family is provided support, capitalizing on the child and family members' strengths and resources, not on their deficits and needs. So teachers and administrators may also be guided by these principles when communicating and collaborating with parents and families of students with disabilities. So the parent involvement has been found to be directly related to academic achievement and improvements in the school performance of children. The educational support and collaboration with teachers have been found to promote child success in school and moreover the programs for children and families are involved and more effective when it comes to the children with disabilities. So we have here what we call the homeschool communication. So having established the critical role of parents in a student's developmental and academic progress and achievement, it is essential that there is a close home and school collaboration and communication. So to establish partnerships, problem solving, two-way communication, and shared decision making are some of the practices needed. So communicating with parents may be done in the several ways. Number one is parent-teacher conference. So when we say parent-teacher conference, these are face-to-face uh, -face meetings held between the parents and the teachers. Conducting such meetings is necessary so parents of students with disabilities and additional needs will be able to share about their child's background, strengths, and abilities, history of difficulties, and practices they have been 
implementing at home as well as interventions done with other specialists. So together with teachers, they can coordinate their efforts and services to support their child both in school and at home. So schools differ when it comes to the frequency of parent-teacher conferences. One best practice is to hold a meeting with parents at the beginning of a school year as part of a goal setting for the student with a disability. In this way, both parents and teachers can set expectations for the year and agree on goals and objectives for the child. This is also a good opportunity for teachers to establish rapport with parents. So conferences are also held after every grading period. So for example, every quarter, trimester, and semester so that progress changes and results can be communicated and discussed with parents and agree on necessary action plans. Next is we have the um, written communication. I I'm so sorry. The written communication. So the homeschool communication may also be conducted through written messages. So such as the use of homeschool communication notebook where teachers and parents write homework assignments. So the student's behavior in the classroom as well as progress on program goals. So a written communication may be time consuming but some parents prefer this form of collaboration as the messages are documented and they can they can provide a copy to a developmental specialist when needed. Another way is the digital communication. So with the influx of mob mobile devices, many parents and families are more able to communicate through electronic and digital means such as email, text messages, and social network messaging systems. So a study found that parents and teachers per Save technology as an effective tool to promote parent involvement and thus value its use for communication. So because it is instant in real time, parents and teachers are immediately able to receive messages and updates about the students. So however, drawbacks can also occur such as when both parties are not mindful of parameters in communication. So it is necessary that parties agree on certain boundaries in order to be respectful of everyone's time and personal space. Next is the homeschool contracts. So a homeschool contract contains an agreement between the teachers and parents regarding behavioral and or academic goals for a student with disability. So just like any formal contract, this is written agreement bet between the teachers, parents, and um, parents, teachers, and the students. So, on the specific objectives and corresponding reinforcement or rewards when they are met. So, one example of the homeschool contract is the daily report card. So, this is an individualized intervention used in school that is anchored on the behavioral principles of operant conditioning. So, the card indicates a specific behaviors targeted for a child with disability that are framed as positive statements and targets for improvements. So the use of daily report card has been found to be beneficial in helping a child with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in school and in promoting daily collaboration between teachers and parents. So um, we will talk about that further when we reach the uh, lesson 6 or the chapter 6. So, we have also here the other ways to involve parents. So, we all know that parents also have strengths, the abilities, and the intuitive knowledge, and the commitment to help their own child. So, they become the advocates of their own children. So, to maximize their involvement, schools provide other opportunities such as parent education and training or workshops and parent support groups. So, we have here parent education. So, this may take the form of providing seminars and workshops to parents to equip them with a better understanding of the ch their child's disability and accompanying strengths, uniqueness, as well as specific techniques and strategies 
that they can practice at home. So such training sessions can be for a few hours done on a quarterly basis or for a regular period, such as every Saturday depending on the needs of the parents and the training capacity of the school. In this way, parents become educated in evidence-based approaches so that there will be continuity in the practices implemented between the home and the school. Next is the parent support group. So these are also helpful as parents are able to ask other parents about tips and techniques to work with their children. So parents should be empowered so that they can participate in planning and organizing parent support groups. So through such groups, parents can draw support from one another during meetings as they share techniques and strategies, even frustrations and successes about their child. So in summary, um, this lesson or this chapter presented the different components of the inclusive and special education, which include the following. So we have the, we discussed the preferral, the assessment, the placement, and accommodation. We also include the curricular modification. And lastly, is the parent involvement. So, across these components, so a team approach is highly recommended where each member, the child, the parents, the gen general education teacher, or the special education teacher, the therapist, and other specialists coordinate and collaborate in planning and making decisions for the child with disabilities. So, that's all for the chapter 4, or, or uh, this is all about the um, chapter 4 and this is the part 2 of the chapter 4. So for your performance activity, answer the following questions. This is consists of 80 points. Put your answer in the comment section below by following the format. So you have to write your name, your block, your blocker, your cluster, and your answer. So this is uh, the deadline of submission is on September 18, 2023, 8 o'clock p.m. Only. So for your performance activity, so let us go back to the beginning of the chapter and check if you are able to meet the objectives. So this time on your own, answer the following questions by using what you have learned from this discussion. So number one is, what are the different processes as well as strategies used in the pre-referral in an inclusive school? Second question is, what are the different assessment methods and tools used to identify the strengths, the abilities, the needs, and placement of children with disabilities? Third is how are the accommodations different from modifications? And why should parents of children with disabilities be involved in the process of planning and decision making? So again, this is the end of the discussion in our chapter 4. So again, if you have any questions or clarifications, please don't hesitate to ask it in our official group chat. And before I, uh, before I end this, uh, this discussion, I want to remind everyone again, please don't send me personal message if you have any concerns or questions please drop it in our official group chat. I do not accommodate personal message. Again, I don't answer or accommodate personal message. Please chat it in our group chat only. And again, before I end this discussion, uh, based on my orientation, the coverage of your midterm exam is from chapter 1 up to chapter 4. And now we are done discussing the chapter 4 and now midterm exam is waving. So it means that you have to study and rewatch the recorded discussion from chapter 1 up to this chapter. And I will announce the date of your midterm examination in our group chat so for the meantime just uh study the part two and the part one of the chapter four and we will be uh we will have our quiz so again thank you very much everyone and god bless